which can be very, very chaotic, especially for the attacking team as they try and navigate themselves inside of the building and prepare for that execute. So for Elevate, they're going to have their sights set on cracking open this half uh, quite swiftly. And uh, in terms of the bands, we'll see Ying taken off the board first. So again, an execute heavy comp. Um, alongside the Docker be very expected in this region so far and then defensively we're probably expecting to see uh, Mira, Azami and then probably uh, Valkyrie, one of, two of those three taken out. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you can really go astray with, with really any of those three. Valkyrie, potentially I'm thinking the Mira here if you really want to keep the focus um, on that information. It's the Azami though, which obviously makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of those sort of choke points here on board, a lot of fighting and therefore those keeper barriers can be so, so impactful. So we get underway for the biggest match of the night, basically, and probably what could be the biggest match for the rest of this stage, Elevate and Bleed. I mean, obviously there's other really, really big matches that will be played out throughout the rest of this stage. Um, you know, I think you've still got Die Wolves and, and Elevate to play as well. That's actually happening later tonight. Can you believe it, guys? A, a bit of a back, to, <laughs> back special. So really, it kind of feels like after tonight, a lot of the sort of top beat top battles will have already taken place. You know, remembering back, obviously, back in week one, it was Die Wolves and Bleed that went toe to toe. Bleed winning that one 7-4. Uh, that being on bank, we now head to board up. Well, the first time this stage as well, we do mix it up because it had really started to get a little bit stale. A lot of Villa, Oregon, Clubhouse, Bank even, had started to multiply a little bit. Something a little bit different now as we head over to board up. And if you are perhaps just joining us right now, uh, midway through the broadcast, Bleed have already played this evening 7-2 victory against Champ, and as expected, Reeks popped off, cracked a couple of digits in a game that only went 4-9 rounds. For Elevate, this is their first game tonight, and they'll be backing up against Dialogues immediately after this one. So, Elevate had quite a bit on their plate preparing for this game, and many, including myself, would argue a little bit more than Bleed, as Champ arguably a weaker opponent, although still mildly strong so we'll see how that impacts elevates performance heading into this game and again as expected entry will be tough castle on board and ashby playing contact inside of security who do you favor we didn't really get a chance to talk about this but who have you kind of got over the other are you on the bleed bandwagon I think Bleed are going to be very competitive in this match. It's a hard one to split, but again, with Elevate having to prepare for two very difficult games this particular play day, and Bleed showing good signs earlier tonight, I don't see any reason that they won't uh, take this one. But again, it should be very close, and it's one that could go either way, of course. Yeah, I, I'm probably a little bit more focused on, on the Bleed bandwagon myself, especially after what we saw against the Direwolves. That was obviously a very, very good performance uh, where they probably showed that they've got the ability to be the best team in the region. This feels like just kind of the next step in the, the transition to, to taking that mantle, taking that crown. Lead on the defense first. Just over a minute and a half remaining in this one. Still no real early contact. Reaps obviously had a, a massive game against his old team, the Direwolves, last week. Gets the opening kill in this one against Elevate Batolji. I'm able to get one back and get through the scucks and that's barcode that then binds to kill onto reaps that's a big one doesn't matter what operator he's playing but a nice little step up from hovind gets himself into a, an elevated position to find the kill onto healthcare takes out the nomad and a 10 three versus three and probably be expecting this kind of gameplay on a map like border between these two teams this is probably what we will be expecting in this match not every day of the week you see Speakeasy caught in a cross, but that might now mean that Bleach will be able to close out this round quite confidently. 3v2, 50 seconds, and Elevate double stacking over the ward's office. Effectively, a 1 versus 3. If and when Tolji goes in for the plan, it's going to be up to Barco to try and cover multiple retake positions here from Bleed. So I think it's in Elevate's best interests here to perhaps try and find one more pick at least before they go for this plan. Is this said and done again? Double castle in towards security, so that's not really going to be viable. It might be a case of Elevate trying to go deep here on site instead of going for the immediate plant, but you can see Bleed just locking down these positions. 15 seconds left. There's only 15 seconds left. You kind of just have to make the rush in, and as soon as you do that, it's always going to favor the defenders. Not a surprise to see it sort of finalized in that fashion. 
you know, not a bad round from Elevate in the sense that they were able to kind of keep it, keep it flowing, keep the kills flowing, get some picks, open up the slide a little bit, but it just stalled out, you know, towards the last 40 seconds, last minute, really of that round. They just weren't able to really make a move, get anything else extra. You know, Bleed kind of just didn't give them anything. So they take the opening round here on border for Bleed Esports. This was a nice little shot from Hovind. And at that point, it was 4-3 Elevate. They got rid of Reaps. I thought maybe the Tide was going to be in their favor. But the remaining three for Elevate, sorry, for Bleed, held strong on defense, winning the round. And Elevate going to have to go back to the drawing board for this second round. And I was going to say, I do wonder if we're going to see that Flores come out to try and counter Castle. That'll be the case in the hands of Speak Easy. Can sometimes be a difficult operator to justify on a map like Border, where you really want all five players being super active on the entry and playing off one another. And if you're Flores, you have a terror as well. You're hindered in that regard. But much like I guess we saw uh, last evening uh, from the Japan League, they were not afraid to bring out that Flores, especially to deal with operators like Azami banned out in this matchup. But Castle in response, we saw that stall out a little bit, elevated in that previous round, and dealt by any sort of win condition late round, and security was fortified. So it's going to get to elevate now in dealing with that Utah going forward. Flores coming into the picture here. On board a lot of utility that can be cleared. Elevate. Have to be aggressive on the attack here, especially on a map like Border. Speak easy straight into just try and clear. That window hop in on site for Bleed. It's going to be the extension up above. No surprise with this. Default extension. Where Skux is a little bit more spread out horizontally to get that information on the Solus. It is Aspi though that loses his life early. So sort of advantage elevate early on in the second round. Getting that opening kill. Banker with a bit of information as well. Solus just hanging out in bathroom trying to keep pressure above obviously for when that does eventually fall into the hands of elevate later in the round. In a 30 then, Skunks down below still and feed information. But Boyd now being a player down, probably feeling the need to make a play, and rightly so. Reaps in the hallway. See if maybe he catch somebody off guard, but unfortunately not meant to be. Elevate just fortifying positions up above. They'll be now establishing the earth and covering those flanks with the Nomad in hand. 70 seconds now for the transitional period into what site to speak easy does find a pick elsewhere, trade it out. Very nice angle there from Reaps deep into what site itself, and Mentalist has repositioned inside of Passport. So bleed now. Couple of positions being locked down, Elevate still needing to be very cautious. 50 seconds left, and again, advantage for Elevate. They had it in the last round. They weren't able to capitalize, now they start making their move. Skux is just happy to just sit still in main. His position not known here, and this swing will be very successful. Lance the headshot onto Ape. Told he's in sight though, getting that diffuser down. Nade. Oh, it's a Whoa. perfect nade from Skux. It denies Tolji. Down and now out for the count. And barcode's low on health and suddenly diffuser on the floor. 20 seconds left. They have to make the drop down. And Skux is watching it. This is very winnable. The quad to win the round. Skux makes them bleed. Wonderful play. There wasn't a whole lot realistically that Elevate could do other than just drop at that point, guys. 20 seconds left to fuse it down. I kind of had to, to fall into the trap of Skux. He gets a 4K. He wins the round single-handedly. What a play there from Skux. And we noted a couple of those positions being held by Bleed could cause issues in the late round. And they sure did elevate. Yes, they had control up above. But transitioning that down below proved to be an issue perfectly placed impact grenade leading into that final 2k great job elevate under pressure in the late round Defenders, protect your bombs to be fair the entry into attackers. the map is actually not all that bad which i thought was going to be one of the bigger issues here for elevate but seemingly so far it is just making sure they can get in towards site with some degree of safety and 
low rotation, the flanks were cut off to the top floor. The spread there from the lead, causing quite a few issues there for Element. Bomb located by attackers. So a 2 0 start on the defensive border for Bleed. You know, Alevite have looked lively. They've been thereabouts in these rounds. You know, these haven't necessarily been whitewashes where Alevite's, you know, struggling to find kills, get good sight control. I mean, they almost had to plant down if it wasn't for that nade from Skux. If Tolji is if Tolji's successful there, you've got two players watching through Hatch. Basically, Skux can't win that round. But he denies the plant, and from there it becomes winnable. It's these very, very fine margins sometimes in Siege. And in the first two rounds, both times go the way of bleed. And if it does kind of mean, you get the sense that this is probably going to be the kind of match where it's going to be scrappy. It's going to be 50 50. These rounds aren't going to be clean. There's going to be opportunities for both teams. You know, Alamate had an opportunity in the first round, they weren't able to take it. Bleed. Uh, and to be fair, they had another opportunity in the second round, didn't take it either. And Bleed's always just going to be in a position. To capitalize then if you don't take your chances they will happily so east there's push barcode clears it he can push forward now there's a castle barricade in his way through break trying to just get a bit of vision a bit of intel on the hop up no one's there though and again bleed extending quite heavily here on border as you do And again, the map entry here from Elevate, really not all that bad. They're on the single wall office. So Mental is posted up, I yeah, think, oh no, Reap's posted up in this position. So, the top breaker from Bleed. What to do in this round, but Alex actually two fall off, so go for a safer option. Can retreat now back towards site, forfeiting control of office. And I think that will be total control of the they're box occupied and armory as well. So again, these lurky positions from Bleed, these positions where they're able to post up, will still be a threat to elevate, and that clock continues to tick down. These defenders need to press down. There's one. And now it's Hoven really just to put up a last stand over towards that Bricks position. Just over 50 seconds left. Crucial round here. Elevate would not want to start. Zero and three. They got the opening kill, but it didn't last for long with Mentalist getting the trade. So Arpe got one, but he loses his life for it anyway. Obviously still Hoven up above. Got to keep this in mind. Late round as it continues. If Elevate don't clear him out, it's going to be impactful. There's one. Minam almost just got a second. Obviously he's going to get swung at this point. He had to be ready for it. I think he wanted the drop at that point, but it was too late. Two versus two though. And once again, for the third round in a row, it's just this firepower from both teams colliding. Again, it comes down to this kind of 50-50 moment. But I tell you what, it's probably more favored for Bleed right now, considering we're about to enter red time. Barcode and Tolji probably need to go for kills because at this point, Tolji goes for the plant. No one's stopping him though, in fairness. Mentalist didn't quite have the best of angles and he stood up for quite some time. Barcode, they've gone and got the kills that they needed, guys. There was two seconds left. That's Oof. a wonderful second kill. The swing at the end on the replay, highlighting again fine margins for the third round in a row. But this time, for the first time, elevate. It goes their way. Yeah, Barco really started to make a name for himself, not only in this match, but overall in this stage, playing very well. Again, the clear up above, not too bad. It was dealt with quite well. And Bleed actually not in the best of positions to deny that specific plant. And barcode in what eventuated into a 1v1, able to win it out just in the nick of the time. Really nice, clean couple of shots. And shaping up now to be a close and competitive game of bleed. Somehow, managed to win three straight and start to get a little bit concerned for Alave, but thus far. It's not looking too bad from them, and they are starting to correct some of the mistakes that we were seeing in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, that's probably what we expected out of this matchup, though, right? A lot of close rounds, a lot of tight contests. So it's not really surprises that how things have sort of played out. 
that does fire elevate have had some really good signs they just weren't able to kind of get the rounds under their belt that's why that last round so crucial so pivotal if you lose that round zero three the mental aspect of it all starts to probably get a little bit heavy for them you start to wonder and you start to probably second guess yourself is it working are we doing the right things you know we're in these rounds but we're not getting the results what can we change what can we fix and you kind of just get some reward for effort because they've been playing well they've done okay in those earlier rounds but they just couldn't finish off now for bleed they too will be in a similar position where they didn't really do a whole lot wrong again a good extension hoven was playing the, the lurk game over towards bricks he got a kill he did his job it was 2v2 smg 11 though is always strong up close it reaps with the kill onto outpay solid way for bleed to respond from that third round they've got one early here but as we've seen in this game so far, the opening kill has not had a whole lot of influence for the rest of the round. We haven't seen flawless round. We haven't seen like a 4v1. It's always been close right down to the end every single round so far. And expecting that again here. But no response quickly from Elevate. That's a difference so far. It's five versus four still. And it makes it a bit harder for Elevate to get through their checklist to get closer to putting the pressure on Bleed. Getting open left and elsewhere, so it's easy to get first for Elevate, but taking low in the process. A two versus four as Hoffman activates over towards Break. Uh, unfortunately for Elevate, they haven't been able to break through this defense with much success. Now up to Tolji and Barco trying to buy Tolji lit up. Because it's looking like a whole lot of information, and Skux has his kill taken away by Ashby. Barco all alone inside of office an attack that looks somewhat promising at the start just crumbling through the mid portion of this round Barco clearly looking good in the server at the moment five and two but one versus four i don't think much really needs to be said at this point so you know what i'm just i'm just not going to talk let's <laughs> let's see what he can do here one v four let's just see what happens He's trained himself, so that's great. Gets a bit of information over towards Fountain on Scuts. And dead. Well, if he sees the drone coming from that direction, you're always going to get the sense that the player is going to come from that direction as well. And that's exactly what has happened. The 1v4 does not eventuate into the favor of the 1. I do get that sense, though, of irony, where I did say we haven't had a round where... It's a four versus one or, you know, a stomp around. And it, of course, happens in said round. So for the first time, really, the night in these rounds does go quite heavily into the, the favor of one of the two teams. Bleed winning that convincingly. 3-1. A little bit of a lead now. Some separation against Elevate. Well, here on the defensive border, you know, the kind of map that does give promise to attacking teams. There's space. There's a, the ability to roam, to clear move around the map attackers have located a, a lot of fights a lot of con early contact fights which can favor attackers it can then really put pressure on the defenders so elevate so far have just not been able to put themselves into a position to capitalize obviously reaps getting that early kill to start the last round puts them in good stead and, and the other thing that's also a good sign here guys for me is that it's a team effort from bleed Reaps has only got three kills actually three kills then five four four so everyone's kind of putting in the hard yards uh, it's an even playing field from Bleed. It's not a one-man show. And Five that's remaining. what's going to make them go from a good team to a great team. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Certainly so. Great spread at the moment from Bleed. All putting in a good effort here so far on the defense. Aruni in play. Attackers dropped the defuser. Intriguing discussion point. Seeing as a, a one-for-one -one trade with the zombie. Arguably not as strong, but still something to deny for them as and chip away at these attackers as they push through the barricades aren't burnt. Black Code entering top east. Well, he was entering top east, but Ashby greets him, runs away untraded, and then Bleed doing a really good job to find picks and fall back mm. to safety and reposition and reinforce other positions around the map to keep Elevate active and to force them back onto drones to locate these defenders. 
and, and that's where they've improved really as this game has gone on. You know, the first couple of rounds, you get a pick, but you keep trying to get a little bit more. Then you get traded. So it's two rounds in a row now where Bleed get the opening kill, but there's no trade. And Elevate aren't able to bring it back to four versus four in, in a quick manner. So now it means that you're kind of moving around the map, but you're always at a disadvantage. Every corner you got to check, it's going to be that extra player that's going to be able to trade. So from this point onwards, Bleak can kind of double up on each other. If one player to your left dies, you can trade, get the swing, and it's a one for one, and you're always going to have that advantage. 90 seconds left in the fifth round. An opportunity for Bleak now to take a three round advantage going into the final round of the half. Elevate trying to just stick together, thinking about potentially a bit more of a horizontal take. They've got the also, they've got those Talon shields. If you can get that plant down, just sneak in. It can be a change, but Skucks sitting in customs. Did he just get timed? I think he might have just got timed. He looked away for all of a split second and allows entry for Tolji. Skucks then loses his life to Ape and plant has gone down. Oh, the fine margins return once again in the fifth round, but shots over towards top of his stairs what? go the way of bleed. My god! They have just swept Elevate like a tsunami. I... Uh, I don't know what to say. Bleed finding every single pick consecutively, one after another after another, so quickly that we had no chance of catching them all. And then even Ape, who had that great cross, also denied... Great retake there from the defense of Bleed. And around that looked very promising for Elevate. I think fundamentally the plan there to set up the Talon Shield to get three was great. They did get a little bit lucky as the security cross wasn't being maintained uh, correctly. That allowed them to get in, get that plant down. But Bleed just immediately, at the snap of the fingers, boom. Straight back into sight, finding every single pick. Not losing a single member, I don't believe, there on that retake. No. And if they did, it didn't matter anyway. That is a very confident round there from Bleed, and one that really looked like it was going to go the way of Elevate. Yeah, and just when I thought Elevate had sort Attack of a blind march and go their way, spot. the timing in customs, unfortunately, for Scots, you know, he's watching, he's watching it, he unpeaks it, and for that split second, and it was all of one second, Tolji's made his way in and got the plant down. And, and then Ape comes in behind and gets the kill. See, you kind of feel like the round that can unravel from there for bleed and they just go bang all across the map and win all their ones in a very quick succession as well and now they have a three round differential over elevate to close out the half five one here will be such a difficult margin for elevate to bring it back from and i tell you what it's kind of turning into a bit of a belting this would be very concerning for the side of elevate if if bleed end up winning this game quite comfortably it's, it's actually maybe not even concerning just for them, probably concerning for the entire league, guys, because of the way that Bleed beat Daiwa 7-4 back on play day one. Now 4-1 up over Elevate, it, to me, just seems like they're just going to run around and farm this league, and then it's just not going to be a competition for first. Maybe if it's been an obstacle, so it sets the scene for that. Looking at Elevate now, who's going to be the ones to really step up here and stamp some authority? Because Q4 ultimately will be terrible, but look at the stat line for a lot of these players, and it's really not ideal. Speak East is finally now being put on a little bit more of a fragging role on that Twitch once he clears utility. The F2 in his hands will do some good damage, but Hold as well, and Zafia needs to really activate these Skucks. UMP chipping away. Told you, and Hcog just. Just being, I guess, pestered away from that entry and immediately a rotation here from Elevate. Very heavily into this structure. Reaps has been playing it every single time and often finding at least one pick. Applying pressure, finding kills, and he does it again. No trade, he just falls down the hatch, immediately does so. No one from Elevate to greet him on that drop either. Yeah, and you're also committing a lot of utility and a lot of time into clearing that position, which is. I'm going to be honest, not even really that relevant to the site itself. So, and then, and then you've got to worry about the drop, even if you want to use that hatch later in the round. There's someone watching oh. below. Skucks will win out in Fountain. A little bit dazed. Oh. oh, it doesn't matter. That's a wonderful shot. The UMP, that is a clean shot onto Barcode. Yeah, this game is well and truly getting away from Elevate now. 
Polji and Speak, easy. Still alive, still with a chance, especially off the back of Tolji getting that kill on the Zofia. Minute left, so some time. And they do have the Diffuser in the hands of Speak, easy. So, okay, a couple of things there to, to keep hopes alive for Elevate, but so much has to go right from here. Reaps is low on health as well. So, an opportunity for Elevate to, to clinch a round that they're probably not supposed to win. To do that can really turn the fortunes going into the second half, but they're still behind. They're still the underdogs in this round. It still feels like it'll take a miracle, and a lot has to go their way from here. A couple of smokes for Speakeasy, so that may aid in a plan, but Reef's still like You can scan for it, playing passive at the moment, low on HP. He needs to be killed, but Elevate starved of information, and a couple of drones, they're not in a very good spot. And 15 seconds left, Tolji in bathroom now shoots out. Sound cue for Mentalist. Easy kill for Mentalist. He's never going to allow for Tolji to just walk past the man. In fact, he collects the double. So Pauls gets called out as well off the back of this half. It's a 5-1 half. Dominant performance from Bleed Esports. They are making Elevate look second rate. Yes, and it really uh, has been headed by players that we perhaps didn't expect to be the ones topping the leaderboard at the moment. Uh, Skux especially, it's his world, his server, we're living in it at the moment. Literally giving the worst gun in the game and he's still popping off in compromised positions. Finding kills and destroying the entry from Elevate. Not exclusively to that round, he had a great clutch earlier on in the match as well. And ultimately, here for Elevate, they find themselves in a very, very awkward position. But for Bleed, a commanding one. 5-1 at the half. And if it was flipped, for example, and it was, you know, the defensive team up 5-1, we'd be like, okay, well, that can sometimes make sense on this map. And a mm -hmm. caliber of team like Elevate, they can bring this back. But uh, I just don't see it happening with this scenario taking place with Elevate now starting on the defense on what was a very, very, uh, yeah... In interesting start to the game. Elevate just haven't really felt like they're in it. Yeah. Maybe the first two, three rounds, I, th I, I still felt it was... And maybe you could even extend that to the fourth round too, I think, really. The first three, four rounds, Attackers back and forth nature to the rounds bombs. themselves. You know, by the fourth round, okay, maybe Bleed had started to gain a bit of an advantage, but there was a, an opportunity in the first two, three rounds that Elevate had the ability to win a couple of those coin flip rounds, but didn't win any of them. And, and that ends up being the difference, right, between a 5-1 half, 2-4 half, or 3-3 half. So, ultimately, Elevate kind of had some chances, didn't take them, and bleed any opportunity they've had, they've not let it slip. If Elevate have had the opening kill, 5 versus 4, good time remaining, and then they let it slip, bleed pounce. If bleed get the opening kill, bleed finish the round off. So that's, that's kind of the way the game has been. I think Elevate have just been a little bit more sloppy. Uh, they've probably been their own worst enemy in some of these Jack's rounds. Not quite clean. Cleanliness is not the way that I would describe Elevate in this game, but I would maybe give that over to Bleed. You know, especially the way that, like, you know, Skux has sort of held down good positions and, and really uh, made it very difficult for Elevate to get past him. Mentalist the same as well. And, and those two have been probably Attackers just absolute pillars for Bleed. And, and Reaps has kind of just been thereabouts. They haven't even needed to have an Ultra Instinct performance from Reaps where he just goes Super Saiyan. So... He's on the Glaz now, actually. He just gets to kind of just chill out and get freedom to have a bit of fun. Glaz on border, along with the Oster of Mentalist. What's the and plan here for Bleed? Uh, a carpet plan. They're just going to send in Talon Shield and Mentalist to head over. He's got that decent plan to get it into the crowd. Obviously, smokes out, so Glaz can come through. This is a very, very strong start already for Bleed. Denial not hitting, and Elevate will need to play post. Attackers are activating. Yeah, and that gas canister a little bit too late. Plant's already down. They've already got two kills. Elevate have just been blitzed. They have been blitzkrieg to here on board up. Not ready for this at all. And this is something we've seen before. I think it was the Knights did it once back in APAC South last year as well. I can't remember if it was successful or not, but this one certainly was flawless. It's a very apt word for this round because everything that Flea did was flawless. Executing their strategy, biting all of the kills, doing it in a timely manner. That was probably one of the more clean rounds I've ever seen from an APAC team in any game, in any tournament. That was perfect. <laughs> you couldn't have done anything different. You literally couldn't have done anything better. No. I, well, it's 
it's a heart back to an old strategy that was popularized on that site, right? You send the Montang in, you plant behind the Montang, but now with Osa in play, not only do you have the benefit of those Talon shields and the fact they're see through, which makes it a little bit easier to play the plant itself, but then it's an extra gun up that you would, wouldn't otherwise have with a shield in the post. And ultimately, the denial didn't hit from element. The smokes didn't land, well, the smoke canisters didn't land, but it was a bit late. No one could directly get close enough to either impact or shoot out that Osa, for instance, because the glass was covering with the smokes. It was actually very, very well laid out there by Bleed. And with the amount of confidence flowing at the moment and the momentum well and truly in their hands, I think that was the correct play to call. It just makes Elevate look a little bit silly. And this would be so disheartening for Elevate coming into this game. You know, we hunt this up. We, we basically said this was kind of the, the last battle probably for the stage in terms of that top, top spot considering Bleed's already beaten Diewolves. I know we got Elevate and Diewolves after this to come, but I almost feel like that match is now diminished. It almost feels like the battle for second in a way, right? Who's the second best team in the region? Is it Elevate? Is it, is it Diewolves? And probably relieves some of the pressure off of Diewolves after their loss back in play day one to Bleed 7-4. And in that particular game, that was the Reap show. Everyone else was a little bit quiet and it was a you know a bit more scrappy and it wasn't as clean, especially that execute just then. So maybe it's also a matter of bleeder just getting better and better. The more time they spend together, the more games they get under their belt. And then becomes less of a reliance on reaps to just go in absolutely insane. You start to bring in these kind of strategies. Tell you what, you got all the hallmarks of a team that can maybe do some damage at a major. Wow. Am I going too early? That's quite the combination. <laughs> Don't know what really to say about that. We'll just let the kill feed do the talking. Nah, this one's over. GG. Go next. Hmm. Interesting game. Elevate. Oh, gee. Well, he's putting up his best fight. Survives for now. Futile effort, though, and speak easy in the 1v4. Uh, well, it will be go next for Elevate. They play after this game, of course, against the Direwolves. Mentals, we'll get the plant. 7-1. An absolute belting. An astonishing performance from Bleed. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't sing their praises enough, if I'm going to be honest. That was impeccable. The only thing they could have done better, Guz, was win 7-0.